The cross waited in utter silence, her unmoving limbs empty and barren. Her form was bent and broken, fashioned by uncaring hands into a scaffold of shame. Soon, lost and violent men would raise her rugged timbers into the unforgiving skies of Jerusalem. In their anger and fury, they would plunge heavy nails into her bark and fasten a condemned man onto her frame. She waits in the shadows while the chilling winds of Mount Calvary begin to howl in agony for the one who would die in her arms. The cross of Christ is a pillar of truth to guide me. The cross of Christ is a shield to overshadow me. The cross of Christ is a tower of strength to protect me. The cross of Christ goes before and behind me. The cross of Christ is above and beneath me. The cross of Christ is on my left and on my right. The cross of Christ is within and about me. How wonderful the cross of Christ. It brings life, not death, light, not darkness. It is the wood on which the Lord, like a great warrior, was wounded and died for the sin of the world. A tree has destroyed us. A tree now brings us life. This is a musical called Canticle of the Cross by Joe Martin, and the piece we are recording now is called The Song of the Cross. Thank you. 
As Jesus approached Jerusalem, he saw the great city and began to weep. This ancient city had known many tears in her long troubled history. Her stone pathways were consecrated with the blood of martyrs and her walls echoed the cries of a million prayers for deliverance. Now, as the promised one drew near, the towering gates of the city flew open to receive her king. Crowds began to gather, chanting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Running ahead, the people laid their coats upon the road as a carpet of praise to their deliverer. They took palm branches and waved them in adoration of their conquering king. This was the day they had long awaited, and their celebration could be heard in the temple. Hosanna, they cried. Hosanna to the son of David. The second piece in our musical offering is called the Celtic Hosanna.
Jesus and his followers lingered in the temple where he continued to teach them a new way. The people treasured every word, but the chief priests, scribes, and elders tried to disrupt his preaching. Look how the whole world seems to be following him, they said. Jesus knew that the hour was near for him to leave the world and return to the Father. He understood that his sacred sojourn to Jerusalem had been a steady, unrelenting procession to the cross. Later, as he gathered his chosen ones for Passover, Jesus broke bread and blessed it. Take and eat. This is my body. He poured wine into a chalice and gave it to them and said, This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. How could they have known that even in their final hymn of benediction, he was once again teaching them of grace? For saturating every holy word he chanted and lavished upon each solemn note he sang was the bittersweet song of the cross.
friends, scripture says they will come from north and south and east and west to sit and feast at this, the Lord's table. And on this night, we remember the Last Supper. Please join me in prayer. God of love, it is because of your immense love for us that you stooped to be our servant and willingly suffered to give us life. For that love, we give you thanks. We also praise you for the way that love is evidenced in creation, in our community, in our church, in our lives, in the events of this holy week. God of love, you have given us a new command to love each other. Help us to show that love in our care of creation to the nations of the world, to our nation and its leaders, in this community, through the church universal, through this local church in its ministry, and to persons with particular needs. In all our thoughts and actions, may we be your servants and reflect your command to love. We pray this in the name of your servant, Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you forever. And as we share together the Lord's Prayer, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. For thine is the power and the kingdom forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' betrayal, he took the bread and he broke it and blessed it and said, take and eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, Jesus took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant It is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. And the Apostle Paul adds that whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he returns. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. And you may take and eat. Amen. The garden had always been a special place for Jesus. As he walked among the, among the olive trees of Gethsemane, did he think of Eden and the tree that had brought death to his beloved creation? Where are you? He had called to his children in the cool of the day. Now he was calling them again. By his message of grace, he was drawing his creation back to the garden. This time, the tree in the center of it all would not bring death, but everlasting life. The emotion of it overwhelmed him, and he fell to the ground in anguish. Over and over he cried, Father, let this cup pass from me. Then, at once, a deep peace flooded his spirit, and he spoke. Father, let thy will be done. His words resounded through the lonely garden, and for a moment it seemed the evening breeze stood breathless and still. Oh, 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 oh,
He had been a carpenter. Wood and nails had been his trade. Now he gazed upon the wooden cross before him, and for a moment he remembered a gentler time. Then soldiers laid the heavy beams of the cross upon his shoulders, and at the crack of the whip, the condemned carpenter began to walk the winding road up to the place of the skull. With each step he took, the cruel timbers beat out a rhythm of death and despair upon the stony path. The song of the cross began to moan like a dirge as the cries of a violent mob filled the air with the music of grief and sorrow. The carpenter fell beneath the cross.
from his hands, his head, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? The next thing the chant choir is recording is called A Tree Once Stood.
The cross of Christ is a pillar of truth to guide me. The cross of Christ is a shield to overshadow me. The cross of Christ is a tower of strength to protect me. The cross of Christ goes before and behind me. The cross of Christ is above and beneath me. The cross of Christ is on my left and on my right. The cross of Christ is within and about me. How wonderful the cross of Christ. It brings life, not death, light, not darkness. It is the wood on which the Lord, like a great warrior, was wounded and died for the sin of the world. A tree had destroyed us. A tree now brings us life. The, the Christ, Christ of the cross, cross is all, all in all, all to me. me. Our final <coughs> choir piece is called Consolation of the Cross.
Friends, on this night, we have reflected upon the great love of God from the perspective of Jesus giving his life for us and the cross of new life and resurrection hope. So let us go into tomorrow, Good Friday, with the conviction that God's love is eternal and reigns supreme. May you be at peace this evening.